I grew up in the backwoods of West Virginia, where your nearest neighbor was anywhere between a mile to five miles away, far outside the city limits. The city was we lived near was once a prosperous coal mining town called Fairmount. The city is nestled in a valley north of Clarksburg and south of Morgantown. There wasn't much you could really do on the weekend unless you had a part-time job, but that never stopped me, me and my friends from exploring the countryside and explored back roads just for fun. Our history teacher at East M Fairmount High had told the class that there were several mines in West Virginia that had been abandoned and some of the locations weren't even remembered. Places in the woods where there had been air ducts were covered over with the local plant's life, and the original openings for the companies were blocked so no one could enter. What caught my attention was the story of one of the mines that hadn't been scheduled to shut down, as there is still plenty of coal to the mine. It's true there were many accidents that had occurred in the mine. One book documented the different accidents called They Died in the Darkness. Come to find out I had a family member in it, though his name and information was wrong. Kersey Grayston, no wife or children, should have read Gracie Creighton, a wife and child. Back to what I was saying. The teacher told us that one of the mines had been abandoned suddenly. No one would talk about why it was abandoned. Those that would say something claiming that the mine had been caught on fire and couldn't be put out. Like the mine fire in Centralius, Pennsylvania. We, wanted, we went to the school library to read books to look for the mines that were said to be on fire. The mine that came up was in Whitehall, the Cone Mine. The location, it said, was just a little past the dying Middletown Mall. We waited till Friday night to, to go exploring the mines. The road were, was closed off to the public, but that didn't stop us. As we drove the deserted path, it started to get foggy. It wasn't like any fog I had ever seen. It smelled of sulfur, and the temperature of the, of the still night air started to climb. My friend wanted to turn around, but I put my arm on his shoulder and told him this was just another one of our adventures. It was hard to see through the smoke. I had to put out a handkerchief to cover my nose just to be able to breathe. I turned on my flashlight and aimed it at what I thought was the entrance. It was a small building with a con conveyor belt uh, coming out of it and the doors were wide open. The smoke dissipated as we neared the entrance. The temperature started to cool. It was just clear enough to, for me to put away my handkerchief away. The building was in despair and dilapidated, but held fast with the old machineries littered around the place. The mine started at the back of the building, which ended in, at the shaft where the elevator had been. I looked down the hole, but I, it was so black I couldn't see the very far. I picked up a rock and dropped it. 1001, 1002, 1003. It hit the bottom. It wasn't very deep. I convinced my friends that we needed to climb down if we wanted to see for ourselves the reason the mine had been abandoned. We climbed down the girder of the shaft and stepped down the ele stepped onto the elevator. As we exited, I could hear a beating sound. I thought it was my own heart, but then I felt my pulse. It was racing. The sound was too slow to have been my heart. My friend, on the other hand, was sweating and ready to pass out. 
Welcome. Called a deep voice. I froze in place, wanting to run for my life. But something compelled me to press on. I've been expecting you both. My body felt stiff as I inched towards, taking a glance back at my friend every now and then, my shoe brushing up against something I, that made me stop. I looked down, a set of bones from someone's hand reaching out for me. The hand gripped my shoe and pulled the rest of the remains forward. I was frozen with fear as the skull of what was a miner looked at me with hollow eyes. You must get out of here, he cried. He must not be allowed to escape. With the wave of fire, the skeleton shank away, screaming in pain, the tunnel I had had been moving towards burst with a fiery glow. Come on to come to me, and you'll be rewarded with anything you desire. I started walking again, though I didn't remember doing so. By the time I stopped, I didn't know how far I went into the mine I had gotten. Standing before me was a wall of flames where the face of someone could be seen. It smiled and spoke to me. That's it. Just reach out and turn the key. A key appeared in the rock f surrounded by flames. There was no heat. Just as I was about to touch the key, the ground started to shake, pulling me back to my own thoughts. No, you must turn the key. The face yelled. I turned and ran back the way I had come. The ground quake began bringing the tunnel down behind me. Come back! The voice yelled. When I got to the lift, I couldn't find my friend anymore. Come on! Called a voice from, a, from above me. My friend had climbed back out. I started to climb up. But the bit of the gravel and ceiling were falling on me. I slipped as the mine piled in around me and buried me alive. I woke up screaming in the hospital bed. I looked around breathing heavy. A doctor came in and checked me out. You are a very lucky m young man, he chuckled. We almost thought you wouldn't make it. Where am I? I asked, looking, looking myself over, but I'm not seeing any of the bruises that I should have come with being buried on the coal. I could have sworn I had been buried alive. You're at the Fairmount General Hospital. Someone found you and your buddy car along US 250 in Whitehall. Both of you were passed out. What happened? I thought we were... I stopped, not wanting to give away the fact that we had been looking for the abandoned mines. You both suffered from smoke inhalations. The local area has been dealing with the fire in the mines near there. We were both released from the hospital the next day. We never talked about what happened, and with good reason. It wasn't long after that my friend started getting lucid dreams. We would call, He would call me ranting about the gate and that someone needed to be set free. He told me I would be the only one that could do it to make sure I would be I would he told me over the phone I know how to get to the other side of the gate I trust you will be able to open it and bring me home what what do you mean I asked come see me I'll show you what I mean I hung up the phone and got in my car when I got to his house the lights were off and no one was home I used the cell phone my mother had gotten me from, her me from her work to try and call him. I would hear the phone inside, but no one answered. I got back in my car and drove home wondering about him. Monday, he never showed up in to school. In class, I went to open my book, and no a note fell out of with his handwriting on it. I fold unfolded it and looked it over. 
I wasn't sure if you would believe me. I'm sorry I wasn't home, but I had to return to the gate. By the time you read this, I'll be on the other side waiting for you. I'm safe here with Gracie. He wants you. He wants you to tell your family he's still here. He too waits for you to open the gate. I never went back to the mine. This day the fire has been burning hot or setting fire to the local forest. The Department of Environmental Protection is working to put it out the fires by sealing the air shafts an entrance for good. I never saw my friend again, but I see him in my dreams calling for me. I'm still waiting for you. Well, this was an enjoyable story, I have to agree. It was pretty fun and relaxing. And I've got some good news. I may be working with the creator of this story, and, well, he opened up a Patreon page for a cartoon he is currently working on, and he's trying to bring it to a film festival. We're currently trying to find backers, and I will leave a link to his Patreon. Uh, if you feel you might be interested in it, well, maybe donate some money if you want, or just bring out and pass the news on to others. We are having all sorts of interesting rewards, and, well, just take a look. And later on in the next month, I will be reading so some of the book that has inspired this animated short that's going to be created soon. I hope you have a great day, and, well, enjoy the Halloween season. <laughs>